I'm Mitch Garvis with SWMI Consulting Group. In Windows Server 2012, Server Manager is a lot more powerful than it was previously. We have the ability to manage multiple servers from the same location. Not in the same way that we did before where we could see the other servers, but really manage them. I'm going to click on All Servers, right click and say Add Servers, and I can either search for all of my servers or select one by typing it in directly. I find the one that I've opted for, which is my new domain controller. Click on OK. Now it's going to take a minute or two to add it, and it's important to know that this server is a domain joined server. The reason it's important to know isn't because you can't manage non-domain joined servers, but because you would have to enter the proper credentials. So now when I click on All Servers, I see that I'm now managing my local host, SWMI Host 5, as well as my domain controller. Now when I go to Add Roles and Features, one of the questions that it asks me is what server do I want to install the role and feature on? I'm going to say DC1. Next. Now I want this computer to be a domain controller, obviously, from the name, and it includes the management tools and all of the features that are required. I also want to add DHCP and DNS with the appropriate tools. I'm going to click Next. I have the opportunity of adding features at the same time. Notice that it's no longer two different wizards. Click Next. And it asks me all of the questions that I would have to answer for all of those individual roles. I love this option that I can restart the destination server automatically if required. And I click Install. And after a few seconds, you'll notice that the Close button appears in the Add Roles and Features wizard. That's because I can just say, OK, I'm done installing, and go about my business. And if I look up in the Notifications menu, it will tell me that I'm installing roles and features on that remote server. When it's done, this will change to say Reboot is pending or Reboot is going on. And when I'm finished that, it will say, now you have to go in and configure the roles and features that you just added. So all in all, the fact that I have this expanded functionality within the server manager, both for my local server and for my remote servers, really makes Server 2012 a much more appealing management experience. I have all of the options that I had before, but I also have an expanded server manager, I have better PowerShell with PowerShell 3, and I can do everything from any server no matter where I'm sitting. So now that my server has rebooted, I can look in the notification area and I see my post deployment configuration tasks are listed as predicted. We're going to wait on those for a minute. Let's look at our dashboard. We see off the bat that we have several more roles and server groups that are all green including Active Directory, DHCP, and DNS. All of these are roles that aren't on the local server. So the dashboard of my server manager really is gives me the ability to be a global dashboard for all of my servers. Also along the sides, I see that I now have Active Directory Domain Services and DHCP and DNS. Wow, that's really cool. So remember, we're still on, if I look here, we're still connected to SWMI host 5. Let's go into my post deployment configuration tasks and promote this server to a domain controller. Remember, I'm still doing everything remotely. Now, specify the domain information. That's right. I'm going to use my local credentials. Oh, I actually have to provide credentials for that. So let's use me with my super secret password. Now I have the option to click Next. I'm going to make sure that I'm adding a domain controller to an existing domain, and I don't want to create a new forest or a new domain. 
and the target server listed up here is SWMI DC1. I specify the domain controller capabilities and site information. I have to enter a directory services restore mode password, which will be another super secret password. I'm not going to specify DNS delegation. I'm not using the install for media options because I am connected to the domain. And I want to replicate from, aha, it's giving me a list of all of the existing domain controllers in my organization. Now it's important to recognize that at least two of these are stale domain controllers. I'm going to say any domain controller, so it will get from a authenticated DC. Leave my paths at the default for the time being. Click Next. Review my options. I can also grab this as a PowerShell script. I'm going to save this as DC promo dot PS one. So the next time I want to create a domain controller, I can do it using PowerShell, should I so desire. All I would have to do is make sure that all that none of this information is specific to this one server. Click on Next. And it checks my prerequisites, verifies prerequisites for domain controller operation. All prerequisite checks pass successfully. Press install. So I was able to do this from my one from one server onto another server. Previously, if I wanted to do that, I would have to use PowerShell, which don't get me wrong is a great option, but many of us are not as PowerShell friendly as we should be. I'm going to look in my notifications pane here and at the same time I'm going to complete the DHCP configuration and I'm going to use my local credentials and that's done. Now all I would have to do is log on to the DHCP server and create my scope. So as we see server manager has much more capability than it ever had before I can go in, I can see everything that's going on throughout my organization. Now here I've only got two servers going on, but it's telling me that it's currently running my post-deployment configuration task for the DC promo, and it's said, okay, you've done the DHCP, so we can get rid of that one. And I can click on this and go into task details and see exactly what's happening at any given point. Now, my ADDS is telling me I now have a domain controller at SWMI DC1. My DHCP server is also telling me I have a DHCP server at the same server. So we see much better functionality in Server Manager than we had in Server 2008 R2. So we're not going to wait for this to continue, but I want to thank you very much for watching the demo, and that's it.